Hello everybody, good morning from South Australia. As you jump on this morning, please say hi, let me know that you can hear me and see me okay. Uh, we have uh, moved to a new house, so we've had to uh, like learn internet and everything here. So please, um, as you jump on, just let me know that you can hear me and see me okay. I'm just gonna make sure that this is set uh, to public because I know some of you have been saying that when I come on live it's set to private we don't know how that's happening but let me just set this to uh, public okay I think we are good hello everyone good morning good morning yes you can hear me awesome it's great to see everybody hi hi well let us know where you're uh, tuning in from hey from virginia arkansas canada oh so good to see everyone love the painting behind me yes this is one of my favorites which way do i move this way <laughs> yes one of my favorites oh hello everyone so wonderful to see everyone hey reese good to see you um when you're on stream now you have to have it as public awesome thank you <laughs> i am learning how to work all this internet stream yard amazing technology i'm getting there slowly <laughs> anyway it's so good to see everybody this morning as i always say i could sit here for the next half an hour and just say hi to everybody um, but i am just really excited about this broadcast this morning not only uh, is my beautiful guest that I'm about to bring on uh, someone that is super super dear to my heart but just such an amazing woman that the Lord is using so powerfully um, in the kingdom and in the earth so I am really excited so get ready my friends for uh, what the Lord is about to do so without further ado I'm going to bring on my lovely friend Catherine Renala Hello, sweetheart. Hey. So nice to be with you this morning. Oh. I miss you. Oh, I, I miss you, you too. Miss Virtual you. hugs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, thank God for technology, hey? Amen. We can still Amen. do this. Oh, well, thank you for jumping on. I know this is going to be really powerful. It's it will be, be lovely to, to talk with you because I love hearing what the Holy Spirit's saying. And I tell you, you spark me. And um, it's always lovely to have a conversation and to be with people around the world. Yeah, it's amazing. Look, like Netherlands and Texas. Oh, my gosh. Like, it's just, yeah, what a gift the internet is, hey? It's so good. Yeah, hallelujah. Yay. Well, guys, for those of you, I know that everybody watching will be like, I follow Catherine and I'm so um, familiar with her ministry. But for those of you that um, might jump on and, and have seen Catherine for the first time, you're going to be so blessed. Um, Catherine is not only uh, the senior leader of the Glory City Church in Brisbane and the Glory City Network, she runs the Australian Prophetic Council and uh, is an author and a speaker and she's just amazing in, in every way. But do you know what I really love about you, Catherine, is that you're a friend of God. That's Aww. like, like that's there's a, so much. That's a lovely thing to say. I Aww. am here. Oh, yeah. Thank God he is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just, I love everything about you. But yeah, I just love that your heart for him and your purity and the way that you listen to him. And, you know, you know me, I'm big on how, you know, we steward the heart of the Lord and the revelation of the Lord. And you just do that beautifully. So I am so honored to have you with me this morning. It's going to be awesome. Oh, thank you, Lana. Well, I feel the same way. And there's always such a purity and a passion and a divine focus. You have dove, dove's eyes, my darling, the oh, Lord would say, you know. Yes. I love that. Doves have um, no peripheral vision. They're just always looking yes. at, at, at what they're focused on. And yeah, so it's I a joy. It. Thank you. Well, can we just dive in? Guys, I invited Catherine to jump on this morning because I've happened um, to be able to catch a few of uh, Catherine's, um, you know, like a preaching at Glory City. And I think I've seen a few of your Facebook lives recently. And I was just really stirred by what you were sharing. I was like, wow, this is so a word for right now for what the Lord is saying. And just to encourage people in this like crazy season that we're mm -hmm. in. Um, so how about we just start, like, do you want to just start sharing, like, what's the Holy Spirit kind of been bubbling um, in your spirit lately and in your heart? Well, I, we're in actually a really exciting moment. I, I know it's been so difficult. I, I've been singing the, um, an old um, chorus. It just 
out of the blue, I just started singing a song from um, the musical Annie uh, that I watched when I was a oh, kid. And that. at the end, they've got the big finale. And, and um, at one point, Daddy Warbuck says, oh, oh, no, Annie says to him, yesterday was plain awful. <laughs> and he says, you can say that again. And she yes. says, yesterday was plain awful, but that's not now, that's then. And, you know, I really felt the Holy Spirit just telling us it's time to, to recognize that we are not to be prisoners of the past, but we are to be prisoners of hope who move forward and to press on. So I've been looking at um, particularly Philippians 3, which is just so beautiful. Yeah. And um, Philippians 3.13, one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I really believe that we've come, just as we've crossed over into a new year with Rosh Hashanah um, and the Feast of Tabernacles, it's it's the springtime here in Australia. And in the natural, you could say, well, okay, well, it's a new thing. It's a new day and a new era as you've just uh, um, released your book, A New Era. It was a delight to, yes. to, to read that. Um, but it, but it really is. There isn't. It's not just a new season. It's not just something new. Something glorious is happening. And um, one of our uh, prophets at church released this word the other night, that really resonated with my spirit. And and it's from the book of Habakkuk, um, chapter one, verse five. It says, "Look among the nations, observe, be astonished." wonder because I'm doing something in your days you would not believe if you were told and you know I really get this sense that the Holy Spirit is wanting us to make room in our hearts to receive exceedingly abundantly above all he we could ask hope or imagine Mm -hmm. now I know when people hear that though they go oh yeah yeah I know that I know God wants to prosper us and give us hope in a future and blah, blah, blah. I know it, but here's my situation. But I, I really feel such a strong word from the Lord right now that, that he is wanting us to very intentionally forget what lies behind, to stop allowing the enemy to, to cause us to live in regret and, um, and cluttering up our, our brain space and our hearts because God wants to take us into a season of supernatural acceleration and blessing. And I, I don't often speak about this, but you know that song, The Blessings, gone all over the world, yeah. the number six. God is trying to get our attention. There is blessing that he wants to release into our lives because he wants to do something in our time that would not be believed if it were told. And um, I I was just saying with Lana um, just before that today is the 5th of the 10th, 20th. So double, double, double for our former shame, pain and disgrace. God wants to release double. And, you know, I've just got this sense that the Holy Spirit is so wanting to grab a hold of our attention cause us to to wake up and shake off the dust and to be really intentional to to not allow the enemy to continually sow fear and and worry and regret into our hearts so that he occupies the space that God wants to fill it's that Isaiah 54 stretch out your tent pegs enlarge the place of your dwelling shout sing aloud you are you barren who've not born but we need to make room in our hearts, in our, in our expectation yeah. and, and resist the devil. Really put your hand up and say, I'm not going there, devil. Yesterday was plain awful, yes, but I'm not going to think about that again. I'm not going to allow him to re-traumatize me all over again. Yeah, that's really good. And, you know, it reminds me, um, gosh, it was probably like nearly two months ago now sitting with the Lord and I just said to him, Lord, what's on your heart today? God, like, what do you want to say? And all of a sudden I was taken into this encounter and I think it's um, in Proverbs 4, 23, it talks about guard your heart with all vigilance. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said to me, you know, right now he's like, I am calling my people to be, and you use that word like intentional 
in guarding our hearts from all of the stuff that the enemy is trying to bring in like into our minds and you know the distraction and you know like people have walked through yeah horrible stuff in in this mm -hmm. year um but i like you have this like excitement in my spirit that and and i know people are going to go yeah i know that but no no, no it's really a reality like mm, we are mm. seated in heavenly places right like we don't live by our natural circumstances like we don't live by um what's going on around us and even this morning like while i was uh, preparing for this and just you know talking to the lord i felt the lord say you know change the narrative like what is the narrative that you're hearing what's the narrative that is going on between your ears like because there is a narrative of the Lord right now that I believe God is speaking about restoration and he's Absolutely. speaking about, you know, deliverance and, um, and you know, the, the increase that he wants to bring to us as his people in this, like, glorious awakening. I, I, amen. Um, I mean, we've just been looking at the um, advertisements that they're putting up here in Queensland. They've got signs saying, we want you for the Harvest Army because... <gasps> We've got bumper crops up here in Queensland and we haven't got our international backpackers and people coming in because of the border closures. So there's the, the fruit is ready to be picked and we haven't got harvesters. And I, I felt it was really prophetic not on so many levels that, yes, the harvest is ripe, that those that you've been praying for and longing for, for salvation, it's, it's ripe and he's saying pray to the lord of the harvesters send forth the harvesters and he, he wants us to go out and receive that but he also i i sense too a sense of harvest the harvest of promises the the overwhelming um coming back of things that have been sown in tears yeah. and you know i am looking here at isaiah 43 verse 18 it says do not call to mind the former things or ponder the things of the past Behold, I will do something new now or spring forth. Will you not be aware of it? I will even make a roadway in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. Mm -hmm. And I just, I get such a sense that, um, that cast your bread upon the waters and after many days it'll come back. There is a coming back. There is the exceedingly abundantly above that God wants to do in so many areas of our lives. But it is an invitation requiring a response. And and a big part of that, um, Lana, I've been feeling and saying the same things, that we must guard our heart. Our heart is our mind, will, and emotions. With all diligence, there's actually a fight going on. Yeah. So when, because I find myself, I, even the other day, I was finding myself thinking about something I said to somebody in America, you know, who I love, that, yeah. oh, that was silly. I shouldn't have said that. It wasn't sinful or bad it was just oh why would I say that that was uh, and I was kicking myself all over again thinking oh, I shouldn't, oh they're probably oh I've probably spoiled that friendship blah, 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 blah. and I, I, I suddenly realized hey you know this is the enemy desperately trying with whatever he can find in the past to throw it at me to get me to ponder the things of the past and clutter up my brain with regret. Yeah. So instead, I had to grab it and go, uh -uh, okay, that looks like a mess. Yeah. That was something that was, you know, that was silly. But Lord, you can make miracles out of messes. So God, I'm going to sow that in faith that you're going to make it work for good, that you're going to bring a miracle out of that mess. And now, Lord, I'm not going there, devil. No, you can't keep lobbing those things over, over the fence into yes. my garden of righteousness, peace and joy. Yeah. And, I, and I, I actually put my hand up now <laughs> as a physical like brain breaker where I just go, I'm going to stop that track here and now. Yeah. I'm not going there, devil, and I'm going to think yeah. about something good. Yeah. And I'm going to sow the pain and I'm not going to allow it just to go over in a horrible replay that just wants to continually distract me, fill my tent with stuff that, that needs yeah. to be cleaned out in a spring clean, yeah. and instead enlarge the place of my dwelling, focus my eyes on what God wants to do, what could double favor and double recompense look like in that situation, and increase my anticipation and my intentional praise about what I haven't yet seen come. 
Yeah, that's so good. And it reminds me, you know, that you use that word distraction. And I feel like there is like there's this real battle right now where the enemy's trying to distract. You know, you look at all the things going on in the in the earth alone, you know, in our cities or our nation, you know, and then the stuff that the enemy brings to try and replay in our heads. And just while you were saying that, I, I thought of something um, for a while now, the Lord has been speaking to me about the awakening to the power of his voice and that there is a an awakening right now happening not only I guess to the privilege that it is to hear the voice of God but what does it look like for us to take what he has said right in the word and what does it look like for me to take the rhema word of God and to meditate on that and what happens when I meditate on that like the power that is contained in the word and you know those that um, follow me you would have seen on my page this week I, I uh, shared a song that has just been released it was um stephanie gretzinger and dante oh i can't remember his last name now but anyway go and have a look on my page buddy the song is called yeah, his voice and it's all this beautiful song about um, the privilege and the power of the voice of the Lord and so as you were sharing that I'm like I really feel like right now there is that call from the Holy Spirit to say hey no that's not I'm not going there like I am intentionally choosing not to repeat that over and over in my head and go down that spiral of you know then anxiety and heaviness and all the stuff that comes along with that but I'm actually choosing to listen to what he's saying. So God, what are you saying about that situation? Like, what are you speaking right now? And and rehearsing the rhema, you know, that he's rehearsing. Yeah, you know? that is oh, so good. Yeah. Rehearsing the rhema instead of listening to the reruns and the replays <laughs> of the of the regrets in the past. It's, it's yeah. so true. And when God speaks it to you personally, a rhema word, oh, yeah. <laughs> And it's so beautiful and it comes when you ask. I am mm. often, off, every day I'm asking the Lord. Um, mm. But often I'll just, I'll be, be discouraged over something that's happened or some, some persecution or some attack or some difficult circumstance. I'm a, a bit of a sensitive person, so I have to really <laughs> ask a lot for encouragement, Jesus. And... Um, and I do. I just bring it to the Lord. I say, please encourage me, Lord, help me. Help, confirm to me what I feel like I hear you're saying. I, I need some help today, a little bit of extra help, please, Lord. And I ask him where to read and he'll show me and speak to me. Uh, the other night for me, it was um, Isaiah 42. Behold, the former things have come to pass. Yes. Behold, I do a new thing. Behold, they spring forth. I proclaim them to you. Yes. And just him just really affirming to me, yes, thank you, God. Yeah. Those things in the past have come to pass and they no longer um, are allowed to re-traumatize you all over again. And whatever yeah. it is that the Lord is speaking, I, I feel such breath on that, um, on Isaiah 61, this arise and shine. I, I was reading it again in Nehemiah, arise and build. And then, um, you know, ask, hearing the Holy Spirit saying, come on, I want to do what you have, what, what, what has not even been told in your time. But it's, it's so important, I think, right now, because so many people have been living in a cycle of disappointment and discouragement. Um, it's been it's been a, it's been an, an awful time for so many people, yeah. and they they could say yes, it, it's been plain awful, yeah. but the good news is that the, the word of God promises that He makes all things work for good, yeah. and if you can make a choice to go okay, but that's not now, that's then. The former things have come to pass. Maybe okay, the the circumstances are still not ideal, but instead, like Isaiah 54, I'm going to start mm. to sing, I'm going to rejoice, I'm going to enlarge my tent, I'm going to enlarge my expectation, I'm going to move out anything that's cluttering my head with condemnation and fear, stealing my confidence, because if, I, if I'm holding on to condemnation, mm. then I have no confidence to truly believe that God wants to do something unprecedented in my days. Mm -hmm. I, I, I lack the confidence to be able to 
have a joyful anticipation of an exceedingly abundantly above because my heart, somewhere deep in my heart, there's a little corner of the tent that says, yeah, but you haven't really earned it. You haven't done, you know, you're not really there yet. And if you buy into that, that sort of um, lie, what happens is that you'll never be good enough. You'll never measure up. Um, because that's the that's the gospel. Jesus, Jesus, the only one who could measure up, died so that we could reckon ourselves dead indeed to sin and alive to God in Christ, yes. receiving His mercy. Hallelujah. Yes, that's yeah, and that's beautiful. And it reminds me of um, I think it's song, a song of songs that talks about you know catch the troubling foxes that will mm. come to raid your vineyard. And you know I've always found that passage really interesting because it doesn't say. Um, it doesn't say like I, the Lord, will come in and do it all for you. Like the Lord actually asks a question, right? He's like, mm. will you? Let's do it together. Yeah. yeah. And the then he's I like, love we'll it. do it together. And I'm like, oh, yeah. and that's always struck me because I have a responsibility to look after my vineyard, you know, like mm. I, nobody else can do it for me. So I have to tend that place of, you know, that intimacy, that relationship I have with the Lord. So if I'm recognizing one of those foxes coming in to spoil uh, the vine and to spoil the fruit, I want to grab that fox and go, mm -hmm. no, you know, that's not in line that's with the it. word. That's not what my, my God says about mm -hmm. me, you know, or if there's compromise, like whatever it is. Yeah. And so I think that, you know, I was thinking this week, you know, the Lord's releasing words like this, I think, to align us and to strengthen oh. us and to fortify us. But I think also, like, it's unto something so we can carry what's coming. You That's know, it. Like, it's, so, it's so true. But what I, I'm, I, I love that because it is, all of this is very invitational. We have a, we have a choice. We can tolerate this stuff. And we can live in compromise and we can live in condemnation. We can have a, um, you know, a, a cluttered up heart and a cluttered up mind and live with frustration and limitation. Or we can make a choice to say, no, that's enough. Not going there, devil. In the name of Jesus, Father, I thank you. I'm guarding my heart today. I'm not going there, devil. I'm going to think on things that I'm going to forget what lies behind. I'm going to press on to what lies ahead. Hallelujah. And when Paul wrote that, he was he was talking about, you know, I, I haven't I haven't been doing as well as I could have, but forgetting what lies behind, I'm going to press on because the hope of the high calling is that I've been called to live like him. Yeah. And I have hope and a future. And uh, so it's not a passive thing or even just a, a positional thing where I go, oh, good, I'm all right. Yeah. Uh, it's an invitation to press in and get, get even more focused on the glory of God. And I've had such an awe and a sense of, I've been using the word terrifying um, glory where um, he wants to release things to people. He wants to, there, there, are, there are things that God wants to do, long-held promises that God wants to release to people. But, you know, even one of these things, I was just um, praying and I did what I thought was right. I, I started claiming it. Thank you, Lord, it's mine. Um, something that, you know, a building that we are looking for. And I, I heard the Lord say, no, it's mine. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> yes, it is, God. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And this is this, this terrifying awe of, <gasps> but he says, would you like, would you like to, to uh, would you like to use that? Would you, <laughs> would you like, like, yes, God, that would be good. And, um, and I just really believe the Holy Spirit is wanting to remind us that, whoa, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And, Wow, God, yes, you're God. And it's a, it's a holy readjustment in our, yes. our thinking that like, whoa. Yes. But his, his smile of a father is, yes. is, is so, he's so for us. And he is yes. so desiring to do beyond what we can even emotionally, spiritually, yes. mentally comprehend. Yeah. But it comes with this terrifying glory yeah. that that readjusts your your vision and goes, Oh yeah. God, you're Lord, you're Lord yeah. of all the earth. 
Oh, and you know, I love that because to me, that like that place of alignment and that place of positioning where I'm living in the awe and wonder of who he is and, and in the fear of the Lord, right? I'm living in that place. Then if I'm truly awake to, okay, so this is yours, Lord, and everything in, in the earth is yours, then I am immediately awake to who he is like and his power and 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 you know that nothing is impossible for him and so in that place i'm like living in like i love what you said the the terrifying glory but i'm also fully like excited and awake like it it brings me back to that old sunday school song you know my god is so big so strong and so mighty like there's nothing my there's god nothing cannot my do, god cannot do. <laughs> yeah. yeah and it just like oh i feel like like hearing what you're saying, I feel like that the Lord is wanting to align us and bring healing and bring deliverance and bring freedom so that we can move into what I know you believe it too, what is going to be the greatest move of the Holy Spirit mm. that we have ever mm. seen. Yay. And it is not dependent upon what happens in the natural. Like it's like the Spirit mm. of God is going to move in power and he's looking for those who are aligned. And I just, I, I love that he is such a good father. You know, the way that he just draws us close, the way even when he corrects us or whatever, like it's always in love to call us mm -hmm. higher and to call mm -hmm. us into, mm -hmm. you know, who we are in him. And I think there is a glorious, um, like, I want to say, like, um, awakening maybe to a stewardship in this hour and I think it ties in with like the stewardship of our hearts and the stewardship of our lives and our gardens with him like everything the Lord is wanting us to really understand how to you know steward with him because if we have trouble you know stewarding the day-to-day -day, like you know we're going to struggle when when things come and so I feel like the Lord is like hey I'm fortifying you right now and I'm, yeah. I'm almost training you so yeah. that you can walk in the victory that you already have in me. It's know? true. I, I mean, it's so um, interesting that, that verse where he says, are, are you tired running with the footmen? What's, what, yeah. what's it going to be like when you got to run with the horses? Yes. <laughs> it's like, whoa. But, but he's not... Uh, he's not um, unempathetic or unkind no. in any way he is consistently kind and what he's saying is that you he says you've got this I'm with you we will do it together and I you know I really have had a sense that there's been a lot of people just really tired really yeah. fatigued but it's yeah. it's been a actually a spiritual oppression I mean we've got to take care of our bodies we need to sleep and all those yeah. things but there's been a like an Elijah depression yes. where he just wanted to sleep for days and days. He just, um, it, it, a blanket of intimidation and depression. Yes. And, I, you know, I really believe that, that we need to recognize that for what it is, yes. that, that that is in a spiritual assault mm -hmm. that God says, all right, arise, shake off the dust, mm -hmm. shake off the past, Forget those former things and I want you to open your mouth and make a sound. Mm. A barren woman who doesn't even have a husband. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's that's a that's a promise that's several steps away, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and um and yet he's saying, start dancing, start yeah. building the nursery, yeah. start yeah. enlarging your tent for the thousands of children you're going to have and yeah. make room, make room. Um, yeah. That is actually, God is not teasing us. No. He is, what he's doing is he's saying, I am going to do this more swiftly than you ever imagined. And the way it's going to happen is if you work with me to yeah. enlarge your tent. Yeah. I had a word for someone yesterday and I, I didn't really want to deliver it um, because I knew that um, they had wanted a, a child for a long time and it, it just mm. looked difficult. And I heard the Lord say really, really strongly mm. um, that just like when Elijah would go to the widow's house and and he said to her, what do you want? She's like, I don't need anything. And um and then his servant said, she, she hasn't got a son. And, and then he prophesied, you're going to have a child, you're going to have a son. And she said, man of God, don't tease me. 
Mm. Don't tease me. And yet um, I feel that there is a, a sense of that in a large part of the body of Christ where many are saying, God, don't tease me. I, mm. you know, I don't want to even start doing this rejoicing over that promise because it seems so far from possible. There's so many other things that would need to happen before that could happen. Yet God says, I'm not teasing you. Mm. He says, I am the God of the impossible. Mm. He, he says, remember, I'm the God that, that parted the Red Sea. I'm the God that brought uh, manna in the wilderness. And I am the God that will lead you for and do the exceedingly abundantly above. Yes, and that's so good. I was just getting up on my phone because this week I had this encounter with the Lord and it was multi-layered, but he showed me um, a healing anointing that was flowing into the church. And in the river of healing was the scripture Proverbs 13, 12. And that scripture is all about hope deferred makes the heart sick, mm -hmm. but, a tr but a longing fulfilled in the passion or whichever. Is a tree of life. of life. Yeah. yeah. And I really feel feel like when you were just sharing that about God don't tease me I feel that really deeply mm -hmm. in my spirit mm -hmm. for people that yeah. there's just been so much battle and disappointment and all of this like God I just I can't hope again like I just yeah. I can't please just I'd rather just stay here because it's too yeah. hard to keep yeah I don't want to go there body. again I don't want to yeah. expose my heart and be vulnerable again because I yeah. don't want to be disappointed again yeah. But, you know, I really, and, and God understands he loves you, but hey, he, um, I, I know this is a word from the Lord. Yeah. God, God is not a man that he should lie. And, and his, he is releasing a gift of faith and a clarion call saying, come on, people, arise. I want you to begin to sing. I want you to begin to beat the drum of hope again in faith. And God says, hope will arise. Faith will arise. And is he's going to cause it to spring up like a well. I just see the dirt and the dust of the disappointments of the dark days just um, exploding out of the top of these wells that have been stopped yes. up. And God says the river of living water is going to flow again. Yes. And it's going to flow through you, to you, and out to touch those around you. And so yes. this is more, this breakthrough is more than just um, you receiving. And God wants to just do so much in our own lives. But it's about us being able to be a river of blessing that is beyond what we could have believed. Yes. And so we've got to be, we've got to, we've got to make this choice. Where else am I going to go? Peter said, you alone have the words of life. And we have to make that decision. You know, warfare isn't, isn't just, you know, yelling at, at different um, principalities and powers. It, warfare starts in our hearts and minds. And that yes. it starts with submitting to God that is saying, okay, Lord, I believe what you say. Resisting the devil, saying, I'm not going there, devil, and turning instead to look at what God's got. And then by faith, waging war with the prophetic words, waging war with the promises. And this is, I really believe, a, a call to intercessors and prophets to shift their focus from the enemy to the promise yes. because he wants you not to be waging war uh, with all all the stuff he's waiting you to wage war with the promises take the promises and the stuff the principalities and powers are, are going to be uh, decimated with the word of the lord and a people whose eyes are looking forward uh, yeah. just like i said dove's eyes about you yeah. before I believe the intercessors and the prophets right now need to get dove's eyes. They yes. need to get their eyes fixed on where we're going because prophets yes. point to where we're going, yes. uh, not to, ah, it's terrible. Yes. Um, it's not that we don't acknowledge that there's bad things going on, but instead yes. if we want to wage war, we need to grab, we need to wage with the prophetic promises right now and we'll have yes. far more acceleration because we'll be, concentrating on where we're going. 
Yeah, and I think that's really good. Like it even ties into the word about, you know, distraction. And at the start of this um, the start of this year, or it might have been last year, I can't remember exactly, I haven't got my journal here, but the Lord gave me this incredible download about the ferocious focus of faith. And he used mm. those words. He said, Lana, it's ferocious focus. Yeah. And I began to study like the word ferocious. And ferocious isn't gentle. It's quite violent, yeah. right? It yeah, is like absolutely. Intense. Like, and he's like, that is what is required in this hour that says, no, 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 there is a resolve in me that I am mm -hmm. so focused upon what God is saying and the direction we're going that I'm making a decision that come hell or high water, it doesn't matter. Like I am focused on what going. he says. Yeah. Because he doesn't oh, lie. So you know, like he's the same yesterday, today and forevermore. And as far as my Bible says in Isaiah 55, 11, that every word that proceeds out of his mouth goes forward to fulfill that to which it was sent so if Amen. that's true which it is then i align myself in jesus the rock and the one who never changes so then i can walk through anything and i am fortified because i'm not i'm not living by you know the media like the lord said to me recently i in a dream i heard him speaking over the church and he said don't meditate on the media he said meditate on the manner and he was repeating it over and over again. I'm like, wow, again, the Lord is, is reminding us as his people, listen to my voice and look where we're going because that's the place of, of power. That's where we find that place of victory, constantly reminding ourselves, God, you said, right? And it's not out of this heart of like uh, the wrong heart. It's the place of faith that says you said, right? And, and then we, we quote and we decree those prophetic words. And so I think that's a really important word because we could easily oh, be wow. distracted, right? Oh, so good. Lana, yeah. I love hearing you speak because oh, I feel like, too. oh, she's just preaching my life. She's just preaching my <laughs> message. It's just, it's I so true say. because the Holy Spirit is saying exactly that. And I love those words, ferocious faith. I, I, had, <laughs> I had someone get cranky with me recently oh. and they said, oh, you're just too nice and you, you just want to do the daddy's lap thing all the time. And, <gasps> and <laughs> I was like, oh, <laughs> I didn't quite know how to take it. As though um, by, by loving God and being loved by him, we weren't being effective or we weren't doing anything. And no. I took a moment and I got a little offended when I got home and thought about it. I thought, but you know, um, warfare is not about us, you know, um, us on our own doing the, the fight. The warfare is the good fight of faith and yes. faith works by love. Yes. And you and I, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us, but that yes. word through actually means to be positioned at rest in him. Oh, and as it. we learn, I've been drinking from this cup today, but it's it's a, it's one of my favorite Klimt paintings. It's this oh. this man kissing the his oh, yeah. his wife, and I'm, I'm a redhead, so I think about God's <laughs> giving me a cuddle. Hallelujah! <laughs> um, <laughs> I love it. it's my favorite painting. But you know that. That intimacy is where the fruitfulness will come from. It's where the ferocious faith and the focus yes. will come from. Yes. And, and it's not one or the other um, lovers and fighters. God yeah. says that as you are a lover, the fight of faith will come through you with such mm. power and you'll not be doing it out of an arrogance or out of a desperation in your own strength. But you'll be doing it out of a place of victory where he, it's a ferocious, fiery yes. faith that is filled and overflowing with the empowering love of yes. the one who's holding you uh, oh. as you are declaring and proclaiming it. Oh, that's so good. And it reminds me when I got first got saved, I went to a Graham Cook conference and he said these words, your intimacy with God is your greatest weapon. And when he Amen. said that, it marked me, <laughs> like it marked my life. And I went, oh, wow. And that's what I feel like. That's my life. Like my intimacy with him is my greatest weapon. Because in that place, like of my intimacy, I am I am living daily in a communion with, you know, with the one who never changes and the revelation of who he is, who I am in Christ, you know, the words that he speaks. That's that's my my place, right? Just, Amen. Oh, Amen. And you know that was Jesus' place. He understood. Yeah. He he never did anything on his own. 
Yeah. And I think that's a trap of the enemy right now is to get people thinking that they've got to just do this in in his name, but forgetting that his name is his his person, is it's who he is, and that we need to we need to live in that place of letting him love us and cast out the fear that would cause us to um you know behave and react in ways that are not the will of God for us. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that that's really important. And I just want to, um, I know we've been going for a little while, so I, I want to be respectful of your time too. So I just want to jump on one thing and then um, we can close. But you mentioned before about, um, oh, how did you, I can't remember exactly how you said it, but you're talking about weariness and you were basically saying that there is an assignment um, that is, you know, that by the enemy to really weary people. And I just wanted mm. to jump on that and just make sure that everybody heard that because mm. I feel like there has been, yeah, this, this assignment from the enemy to weary the saints, like to really just bring this heaviness and this discouragement. Like one time, I think it was last week or the week before, I felt so low and I was like, God, what is going on? This isn't my personality. Like this isn't me. And mm. I was just like, oh, Oh, like I am I am so done and the Lord whispered in my ear and he said to me Lana this is not you he said it's an assignment of the enemy and that immediately changed my focus and I began mm. to go after it because before that I was like oh what have I done I'm not eating properly like am I not drinking enough water like I have to do yeah. all of that stuff but it was unusual like it wasn't yeah. my normal um, yeah. And so I just I wanted to just um, repeat what you said, Catherine, because I felt like there were people that would be watching that are like, yeah, I've just been so discouraged and depressed. Like, what's wrong with me? Yeah, um, it's a, yeah. it's an Elijah. It's an Elijah depression that is yeah. a spiritual attack. Uh, yeah. I mean, Jezebel was the one involved with this. Yeah. And I, I really believe that when we recognize that this is actually a plan of the enemy to get us to give up, to to down tools is the word I've been using. It's like and the enemy saying just down tools, yeah. it, you, it, you know. But yeah. the opposite is what the Lord is saying. He's saying mm -hmm. arise and build. Yes. And I've been feeling it a lot out of um, the book of Nehemiah mm -hmm. where they tried so hard to stop the construction of the wall. They, they worked, they did everything. They criticized, they said, Look, it was useless. Even if a fox jumped on your wall, it'd fall down. Um, and and they criticized his motive motives. They threatened their lives. Mm. And the whole plan was to get them to down tools. Yeah. And I believe the enemy is doing everything he can to get people to down tools, as in to down their weapons, put down your weapons, don't fight, don't don't wage war with your prophetic promises. Don't step out. Don't don't keep moving. Just down tools and let let me just blanket you with a, a depression. And let's just all be on a holding pattern. And mm -hmm. and the the trap with it is is that he isn't trying to give you a rest. He is trying mm -hmm. to to destroy you and to discourage you. That's but right. those that wait upon the Lord mm -hmm. will mount up on wings as eagles. They'll run and not grow weary, and they'll walk and not faint. And God is wanting to grab a hold of our faces and lift up our heads again to see his glory, to breathe again. And this is where intimacy comes from. He breathes into us mouth to mouth like he did when he created mankind in the first place. He wants to breathe his breath, fresh life, fresh the oxygen of heaven and breathe fresh hope in you to say, my beautiful one, beloved, let's catch those little foxes. Let's stop tolerating those campers that are wearying you mm -hmm. and let's clear out the tents. Let's have a spring clean yes. and, and spring clean your head and spring clean your heart and mm -hmm. refuse to tolerate the, the regrets, the condemnations, the fears, the, the um, attempts of the enemy to get you thinking about all the possible things that could go wrong. Mm -hmm. And to instead let his perfect love cast out fear. We were singing yes. that song, My Fears Are Drowned in Perfect Love, mm -hmm. last night. And, you know, I really believe that's what we intentionally need to do. We need to let mm -hmm. him come and drown our fears in his perfect love so that we can move forward in faith. 
Yes, that is so good. And I was just, oh, I love, I just, I love you and I love chatting with you because you, <laughs> you. Yeah, oh, I just feel this flow and I'm like, I heard that too this week. Oh my no, gosh. Like, <laughs> I feel the same way with you, Lana. <laughs> oh, I just, I love my it. My sister from another mother. Yes. Blah, blah. Oh, big hugs. <laughs> Oh, well, I just I want to read these two scriptures quickly, just in closing, if I can um, hang on, um, because I heard them and then I just laughed because I'm like, oh, this just ties up so much. So I'm going to read it to you um, out of the passion just because I love the way it's written. It's out of Song of Songs 2. I think I'll start at verse 11 and it says here, the season has changed. Now, I know we know this scripture very well, right? We've heard it a hundred times and I, I know I've been prophesying it for, I can't even remember how long, but this is, I believe, where we're at. Like God is speaking this right now. So I want you to receive this as I read it to you. The season has changed. The bondage of your barren winter has ended and the season of hiding is over and gone. The rains have soaked the earth and left it bright with blossoming flowers and the season for singing and the pruning of the vines has arrived. I hear the cooing of doves hey. in our... Yeah. <laughs> cooing of doves in our land filling the air with songs to awaken you and to guide you forth can you not discern this new day of destiny breaking forth around you the early signs of my purposes and plans are bursting forth the budding vines of new life are now blooming everywhere there is change oh, sorry the fragrance of their flowers whispers there is change in the air oh i just i really want to just release that to to everyone today because i just i feel the holy spirit so strongly um on those words and the other scripture i heard and i giggled because of what you started with catherine was when you were speaking at some point i heard zechariah 9 12 and i i got it up and i know it but i got it up to have a look at it in the esv and what does it say return to your stronghold O prisoners of hope for today i declare i will restore to you double double, <laughs> hey, double for your trouble amen oh. this is the 10th 20 yes, yes today i will restore yeah yeah, we receive it, Jesus. Uh, I love so you, Lana. Good. You're so uh, lovely. Too. I love you, <laughs> what too. What a powerful word. Oh, uh, I love that. So, so good. I could just sit here and chat with you all day. <laughs> so good. Yeah. Praise oh. God. Well, thank you so much for jumping on with me. It's, it's been, been such a, a delight. Joy, as it's a nice way to start the day. You yeah. enjoy your day. It's a public holiday here in Queensland. So yeah, same here. we'll go in and enjoy our sunshine. Yes. I love you very much and love look forward too. to talking again soon. Yes, absolutely. And guys, just before we jump off, see this. Have I got it in the right? Oh. This is Catherine's book. I don't know if you can see it, but it's called Supernatural Freedom. Um, where is it available, Catherine? Like Kurong, Amazon? They can get it everywhere, either from yeah. my website, CatherineRinala.com or Amazon or any, any bookstore. They're all there. And um, yes. yeah. yeah, thank you. No worries. But guys, if like I know a few of you jumped on and said, oh, this is my first time seeing Catherine. So please uh, jump on her website, CatherineRinala.com. I'll put it in the comments uh, once we've um, gotten off. But is that the best way, Catherine, for people yeah. to yeah, jump on? Awesome. Connect or Yay. on Facebook. How yeah. it, praise the Lord. Oh. Awesome. Sounds good. All right. Well, Thank lots you. of love, love you. to you, my friend. Thank you for joining me and love lots of lot. love to you, everybody. Have a blessed day and uh, we will see you again soon. Okay. Bye. bye everybody. Thanks, bye. Lana. Bye-bye.